Time is limited, and I think we'd better get at it here. There won't be any press wave coming in, so we can start. I uh, welcome back, I think. But uh, <laughs> let me also welcome Dick Thornburg to his first congressional leadership meeting as Attorney General. Yeah. As I reflect on New Orleans, it's quite apparent that the high spirits of the convention would rather intoxicating for everyone, especially my staff, some of whom I hear are still enjoying or missing on Bourbon Street. <laughs> Seriously, this was one of the greatest conventions in my memory. As you well know, that's a, a long memory. Uh, Michael did a superb job with as, as permanent chairman, and Bob, would you please pass on my compliments to Olympia Snow, who was an exemplary vice chairman. And to Frank Ferenkoff, our gratitude for you and the official proceedings staff for your long hours and hard work, and it, it showed. And to all of you in this room who addressed the convention, congratulations for your eloquent statements on our party's principles and our hopes for the, for the future. When we have an opportunity to contrast our record of accomplishment with the other side's vague promises, the result is clear. The American people know they can't take a chance on a blind date. So poll after poll now shows the Bush quail ticket is coming on strong. The other side's calling for change. Well, when you were out of town, Dave Brewer wrote a splendid article emphasizing a point that was made in New Orleans, and I urge us all to continue to emphasize it. We are the change. Let me now call on Frank Perrin Crawford. Any comments he'd like to share with us, and then if any of you would like to direct any question to Frank, please do so. And Rudy, I hope you'll feel, feel free to shine in, chime in too. Frank? Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I think to give you a quick overview of, of how we see our current status, you really have to go back and start at the conclusion of the Democrat point. But technically it was, and when you look at the results coming out of Atlanta, uh, Mike Dukakis got a tremendous bump in the polls. He had as much as a 17-point lead uh, over the vice president. How do you do? Well, I'm fine, and it's a really great moment for me to see you, Mr. Well, President. Well, we're pleased to see you. Hello there. Very, very pleased nice to see you. Well, come in and join the job here. and all of you, what you're doing and keeping alive the hopes and aspirations of the British people. And, uh, it's impossible for us to conceive of Poland without a central role of solidarity and all that it stands for. And as you know, we have a rather sizable Polish-American community here in our, in our country. And, uh, we're pleased that the government there has taken the first steps by meeting with Lech Walesa and 
and uh, and then you right there, I could say something, and you could correct me on something. I call it Wek Lekwalesa, and yet every once in a while I am, I hear it referred to with his name as Walensa. Walensa, yes. It is without an end, but it comes out Walensa. Okay, I'll say it correctly then. <laughs> From now on. But uh, I hope that this first step will be just that, just the first one leading to a genuine national reconciliation. And we, I believe that only through such a national reconciliation can, will there be an economic help and, uh, and the people. Please present Ambassador Timothy Tower. Yes. Hi, Timothy Tower. <laughs> good to see you, sir. Well, it's good to see well, you. I'm very sad that I'm, I'm leaving you to go to another duty. Well, but it's been an exciting five and a half years. Well, I was That's going to say, I want to thank you for all that you've done. Thank you very much. All. I appreciate that. Well, My wife, Dane, Mr. Hello. President. Hello, Mr. President. Nice to see you. It's an honor to meet well, you. An honor. Nice to meet you. 82-year-old mother from Cleveland, Ohio, nice who I'm just so flew in for this. You. Nice to see you. My son, Timmy Tell. Hello there. He's going to Paraguay with us. And my daughter, Dane, who is uh, going to nice stay in boarding school. Nice to see you. Hi, how are you? You know Jackie Tillman from the NSC. Uh, yes, I do. Well, why don't we, why don't you get in here, and uh, maybe one of you come around over here, and why don't we get a family photo? Oh, there we go. Grandmother will be right there. Let me. Grandmother will be Turn slightly sideways and squeeze your Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Well, well all right. Uh, I th don't think you should go without having some souvenirs before you go. <laughs> For you. Thank you, sir. And Thank you, you, Mr. President. <laughs> and the kids. Little. There. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. There. And there. Thank you, sir. <laughs> oh. Well, listen, please to do it and again, thank you very much. You're for looking you've done very well, sir. And for what you're going to do. <laughs> thank you very much, Mr. President. All right. Thank you, sir. Yeah. We're very proud. Thank you. Come back. Speak in Spanish. See. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, down speaking Spanish. <laughs> All right. Thank Good you very much. Goodbye. 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 Conditions for for fires continue to be very strong, uh, very gloomy uh, for, for the, the next few weeks for all of this country. And we're quite because it's so dry. It's been, uh, and, and of course, you were just in California. I'm sure you know how dry it is. Oh, yes. Uh, so that, that this is this is what we're having this major problem in Yellowstone. And, and, 
as, uh, as uh, we all know, that once these things get too far gone, they can't do anything. Well, I know, and that, let me, maybe I misunderstand some things, but yesterday in the meeting, congressional meeting, when Al Simpson brought up the park, and uh, it seemed to indicate not a rule about in the, in the park that uh, nature started a fire while that had burned. Uh, and uh, you had gone <coughs> there and the chance right. of that. That's was, right. Am I right? That, that, that is correct. You look well. Thank you. <laughs> Javier Garcia. Mr. President. How are you? Very nice to see you, Mr. President. Nice to see you, Mr. President. Miguel Uria. An honor, Mr. President. Hello, sir. Nice to see you. Thank you, Mr. President. Jorge Negro. Mr. President. Hello. Good to see you again. It's good to see you. Thank you. And Romelia Cabal. Hello, sir. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Nice to see you. We're going to get a group picture here. Oh, well, I think it was a really Yeah, we want the group. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 Thank you, sir. Well, I want to give all of you, I don't know what your chamber has done with regard to inspiring your young people to education and so forth, and uh, also the work that you've done on getting Hispanic Americans engaged in politics and so forth. I think it's wonderful. We, we'd like to thank you, Mr. President, for all the you do for us, too. And I think that uh, you did the best, the best work, not only for the Spanish Americans here at the United States, but for the, for the whole uh, United States and for the whole world in time. Well, I'm going to thank you for all the help you've given you to support our administration and on a trade bill that would not be protectionist and so forth. And uh, I also know that and recall that you endorsed the Reagan-Bush ticket in 1980 and 1980. <laughs> yes, yes. Good memory, Mr. President. But let me, let me tell you, Mr. President, in 1981, the first meeting that we had over here with you and lunch, and I said that we want the U.S. administration to give us a chance to participate. And that time, we were 200,000 Hispanic businesses. Today, it's 400,000 Hispanic businesses. Yes. And, 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 and the sales of those businesses have grown by leaps and bounds. We were selling $10 billion in 1980. Right now, it's almost $20 billion a year sales. So. What we ask you, they give us an opportunity. I think we're very happy to report that through your help and through our efforts, we've been able to encourage Hispanics to go forward in businesses. We have also start a bridge to Latin America. We're working with Mexico and Latin America. And let me tell you, that those people over there held you in high esteem. They say that you are the greatest thing to happen for this country and for all well, America. So. <laughs> I know the work that you've done regarding inspiring entrepreneurship and the increase in small business ownership and all, how wonderful that is. But I think you ought to know this is a Thursday. Yes, yes. Every Thursday I have a Mexican lunch. <laughs> <laughs> we will we right. be eating in, in, in the restaurant. We're very well aware of it. I see it over there. <laughs> we, we, we have our, our convention, as you know, here, and uh, I know that your schedule is not permitted for us, for you to be there with us, but we want you to send a message to all the delegates that are here from across the country for the ninth convention of the U.S. Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, and that we admire you, Mr. President, and I think that we have uh, a lot of respect for you. Well, and you. I think that the hearing from you is going to really make our convention a complete convention. Well, 
please tell your colleagues that how honored I am by your visit and pleased to have them here and how much I appreciate them, all that they have done. Thank you, Mr. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, to continue with this work, Mr. President. And for a while yet. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Well, Thank you. Thank you. Buena suerte. I appreciate it. I know you came away from your lunch to but this is an opportunity we won't miss for a while, Mr. President. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.